LAist and Show and Tell present an evening with David Sedaris. The writer, humorist, and radio contributor will take the stage Saturday, November 16th at the United Theater on Broadway. Tickets and information at LAist.com slash events. On Imperfect Paradise, the rise of Hollywood's biggest feline celebrity, P-22. He became the Brad Pitt of the cougar world. What we can learn about coexisting with wildlife. Listen to Imperfect Paradise wherever you listen to podcasts. Today on the LA Report, Governor Gavin Newsom has issued an order that urges cities to clear away street camps of unhoused Californians. About 2,500 sag after members who perform in video games are hours away from a strike. And as the Paris Olympics begin, yet another athlete from Wilson High in Long Beach is on the U.S. team. It's Thursday, July 25th. I'm Nick Roman. This is the LA Report from LA at 89.3. Governor Gavin Newsom today issued an order to state agencies that directs them to clear homeless camps, including the places where no shelter is available. That order is getting mixed reaction in Los Angeles. Joining us now is senior reporter Nick Gerdup, who has been following this. So, Nick, what does the governor's order actually do? Yeah, so as far as instruct, giving instructions, the order really applies only to land owned by California state agencies, uh, like state beaches and state parks, and it orders those agencies to adopt the policy that the highways agency Caltrans uses to clear encampments. That policy requires giving advance notice to people before clearing an encampment, requesting services for people, and storing belongings that are left behind. It does not require that people are offered an available shelter bed. Um, and the other thing that the governor did today, and it's not so much an order, but he encouraged local cities and counties to adopt similar policies and to act with urgency to clear encampments that they deemed to threaten public health and safety. Uh, This order comes after a recent Supreme Court ruling that no longer requires shelter to be offered before authorities can ticket or arrest people for camping in public. And this comes, Nick, as homelessness in California has been growing year after year. So what does Governor Newsom say about his order? Yeah, he issued a statement saying there are, quote, there are simply no more excuses, end quote, to clear dangerous encampments. And he says, quote, it's time for everyone to do their part. And what does that mean then for the Los Angeles area? So we could see more clearing of encampments on state beaches and state parks, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, But the vast majority of unsheltered people are actually in city and county territory, not state lands. And it's really up to those local elected officials to decide whether to step up enforcement or not in their jurisdictions. Uh, I'll note the governor is staking out a different position from L.A.'s top elected leaders at the county and the city level. Uh, L.A. Mayor Karen Bass put out a statement saying that housing and shelter, not criminalization, are what work to reduce homelessness. Uh, She added, quote, strategies that just move people along from one neighborhood to the next or give citations instead of housing do not work, end quote. And L.A. County Supervisors Chair Lindsay Horvath has proposed not allowing county jails to be used to detain people arrested for violating anti-camping laws. Uh, That is up for approval by the Board of Supervisors this coming Tuesday. Uh, But other officials see it differently and they're calling for more enforcement. Uh, The mayor of Lancaster, for example, wants to see stepped up efforts to remove encampments in his city. Uh, He recently said he's, quote, warming up the bulldozer. Senior reporter Nick Gerda, and you can read more at LAist.com. When we come back, as the Paris Olympics begin, yet another athlete from Wilson High in Long Beach is on the U.S. team. Hi, this is Larry Mantle. And I'm Desmond Mantle, his son. Together, we have a new podcast, Passing the Mantle. I grew up listening to my dad host Air Talk, and now I get to sit down with him in the studio to talk about what inspires us and makes us curious. We'll dive into societal trends and how they've changed over generations. Discussing it all through the lens of father and son. Join us. Subscribe to Passing the Mantle from LAS Studios wherever you listen to podcasts. Summer is in full swing, and it's hot, so cool down with a sweet cold treat at LAist's Ice Cream Social. LAist food and culture editor Gab Chabran and How to LA host Brian De Los Santos are hosting a chat with some of LA's most inventive ice cream makers, and we'll all get to taste their delicious creations. It's July 31st at the Crawford in Pasadena. Get your tickets at LAist.com slash events. 
This is the L.A. Report. I'm Nick Roman. Los Angeles needs more housing. Housing reporter David Wagner says city planners will hold a public hearing this evening to talk about how to do it. Because state law requires it, L.A. has to plan for almost half a million new homes by 2029. But the city's current zoning cannot handle that much growth, so planning officials now have to come up with new ideas for where to put hundreds of thousands of new homes. Nearly 75 percent of the residential land in the city of Los Angeles is reserved for single-family homes, and elected leaders want to keep it that way. David has written about it in detail at LAist.com. The California Supreme Court ruled today that ride-hailing firms Uber and Lyft and other businesses in the gig economy can continue to classify their workers as independent contractors. The court has upheld Proposition 22. That's the voter-approved law written by the gig industry that allows them to treat their workers as contractors. Here's CalMatters reporter Levi Sumagaisai. The ruling was actually about whether Prop 22 interferes with the legislature's right to regulate workers' compensation, and the ruling said no. That means nearly a million and a half Californians who work in the gig industry still do not qualify for sick pay, unemployment, and other benefits that company employees get. About 2,500 sag after members are going on strike just after midnight tonight. They're the performers in video games. Producer Libby Rainey says contract talks with top video game companies broke down last night. The sticking point is artificial intelligence. Performers who bring video game characters to life say they're fighting for the right to informed consent for the AI use of their voices, bodies, and faces. They've been negotiating for 18 months. A spokesperson representing video game producers like Disney and Warner Brothers says they're disappointed with the move and that the two sides have agreements on every other issue. You might remember last summer when AI was a major issue during the twin strikes by Hollywood scriptwriters and actors. Wilson High School in Long Beach has a long record of producing great athletes and great Olympic athletes. Reporter Mariana Dale says the Summer Games in Paris will be the 18th featuring a Wilson alum. This is Max Irving's second time playing for the U.S. men's water polo team. I know what to expect, and the beauty of it is it's still the same game that I've been playing since I was uh, playing and practicing with Long Beach Wilson. Irving says it was a big jump to go from middle school to training with JV and varsity players his freshman year. It kind of taught me that it was okay to be in uncomfortable situations, that um, a part of growth is being uncomfortable. Irving is one of more than a dozen Wilson water polo players that have represented Team USA at the Summer Games since 1960. I'm Mariana Dale. Thanks for listening to the L.A. Report. I'm Nick Roman. Be sure to listen again tomorrow morning when Suzanne Watley brings you the L.A. Report AM edition. The L.A. Report is produced by Libby Rainey and Tiffany Ujiea with special help from Daniel Martinez. Megan Garvey is the executive editor. Catherine Mailhouse, the director of content development. Our engineer, Tui Mao. Original music by Scott Kelly. You can read more about this evening's stories at LAist.com. You can also listen live on the LAist app or on the radio at 89.3 FM. You know, we say it all the time, but it is so important, and it's true. Listeners like you help make the L.A. Report possible. So please donate at LAist.com slash join. You make the L.A. Report happen. This podcast is supported by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe quality journalism makes Southern California a better place to live. On Imperfect Paradise, how did a mountain lion living in Griffith Park become a major celebrity? Caught on camera in the Hollywood Hills. Is this big cat the famous feline known as P-22? He became the Brad Pitt of the cougar world. What does P-22's story say about our ability to coexist with wildlife? We can wipe out every animal we see in order to make money. Listen to Imperfect Paradise wherever you listen to podcasts.